Well, hey there everyone, welcome back, it's Snoo, and today I'm going to give you my final showcase video on my current and probably last iteration of the build, which is a 99% Fizz to Cold Conversion Magic Find Hybrid Ice Shot Deadeye. I'm definitely going to start this video talking about why I elected to go with Ice Shot as a first time ever. Generally not considered one, even one of the very best bow skills in the game. Why not Lightning Arrow, which is the general choice? Definitely over Ice Shot. And why not Tornado Shot? Of course, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Then I'll give you a mapping showcase on the exact type of strategy that this build was conceived or designed for, which is a super juiced Tier 17 Sanctuary map, Quadruple Shaper, All Flames. And I haven't really featured a whole lot of that specific content on my channel or Twitch because I've been doing Meat Sack stuff and I've been doing Barrel stuff and I kind of enjoy that more. But anyway, I'll give you... Uh, the real deal in the mapping showcase here. Then uh, we'll go over the gear choices. Why them? The gems, the jewels, the passives, and the path of building. And that's how we'll do things as usual. Well, let's get started. Why I shot over lightning arrow? Why not tornado shot as well? So we'll start with tornado shot. It was nerfed extremely hard. This league, a lot of people began testing tornado shot again in, in standard league with their characters that were already decked out like crazy. And even they had a lot of complaints about the current state of Tornado Shot. So I kind of decided to just take their word for what it is. And I didn't test it personally. I still might actually test Tornado Shot a little bit before the very end of the league. But I planned from the start to do something around Lightning Arrow. Fizz to Lightning and Cold Hybrid Lightning Arrow Trinity build. I've done that kind of build once before. I figured I would probably do it again. Uh, but anyway, the reason for that is because while Tornado Shot was strong and has shotgunning capability, the Nimbus Ring allows you to get some shotgunning capacities in the return projectiles, especially if you're standing in the hitbox of whatever enemy you're trying to kill. This is especially potent on map bosses, uh, actual bosses, or even meat sacks. Any high health target works really well. And this is a new discovery for me, so quite fond of how Lightning Arrow and or uh, Ice Shot can perform with the Nimbus Ring. Very strong indeed. I was especially excited too for the Yoke of Suffering massive buff, and I figured I might be able to do a sort of 99% conversion rather than 100% conversion, and then take advantage of the tattoos like this one and this one uh, to get even more benefits out of Yoke of Suffering. And then it kind of dawned on me that my plans to do Lightning Arrow would, well, there would be some problems around that because for one, Lightning Arrow only converts 50% of physical to Lightning, whereas for some reason, I shot converts 60% fizz to Lightning, and I would use the Watcher's Eye to get the remaining 39% converted over, and that wouldn't work very well. At least not without a mere tier quiver, especially wanting to use this glove and helmet combo like I've already made videos on. So that was one big reason why is the difference of conversion. That 10% difference uh, created a real issue with uh, trying to use lightning arrow. Another reason is because Yoke of Suffering, if I go for this, is already giving me shock for free. And the biggest reason, by far the biggest reason why you would choose lightning arrow over ice shot is because... It has better clear and better single target because of shock. However, if you were somehow able to get shock in a major way, not as big of a way, obviously, but still in a major way, like all of the damage shocks, <laughs> well then suddenly Lightning Arrow is losing a lot of its leverage over Ice Shot because Ice Shot, of course, is extremely strong. It allows you to freeze enemies. The biggest, most powerful defensive layer in the game is freeze when mapping for sure. And, you know, it's it technically has a higher damage coefficient as well. The effectiveness of added damage, at least at level 22, is 179%. Normally, you would have level 21, and that would be 176%. So, very, very strong. Lightning Arrow is a little bit under that. And the reason why you don't use uh, Elemental Hit of the Spectrum, even though that gem is brand new and really strong, it only has added effective damage of 100% and is therefore... Absolutely terrible in comparison when combined with a mere tier physical bow, which is the end game uh, setup effectively. So that is why, really, those two reasons. Yoke of Suffering, granting full-blown shock uh, for all elemental damage, and the fact that I shot converts 60%, not 50%, like Lightning Arrow, 
uh, the, the combination of those two things is why I ultimately decided to go with Ice Shot. I suppose I should throw in a third motivation, the fact that I never played this build before. I've never played Ice Shot before, so I figured it would be kind of nice to you know, do something I never did. So that is it. That's the reason why I'm doing Ice Shot over Lightning. It's really not that complicated. So now we'll do a little mapping showcase and here's the atlas so this atlas is one that a lot of people haven't seen much of this is sort of the go-to shaper all flame atlas however uh i like a little bit of an adjustment here i don't like shrines i don't feel like shrines is offering a whole lot of power in this case yes you get a little bit more value out of the shaper all flames to put shrines on there but they're not like strong boxes you can't like get to reopen them you don't get a ton of them on there anyway but you can very easily force alva onto each map and that's four additional alvas uh, if you simply drop shrines and drop you know a little bit of the uh, quant wheel here but this setup forces beyond delirium alva and ritual to spawn on every single map gets all of the effectiveness of the eater of world altars uh, which can make the map extremely difficult you know if you just start pounding out those player side altars uh, these maps can absolutely be way harder than back to basic maps uh, before you know it but uh, yeah, still getting all the strong box stuff, so we'll be putting Ambush in here. I'm going to be running this high pack size, relatively high pack size, uh, Antagonist map. The Antagonist refers to the prefix modifier Antagonist. Increased number of rares. Uh, rare monsters each have two additional modifiers, which ends up being, you know, a slightly bigger number when we put this in. So, we got Eater of World selected. We got Ambush on here. And this is a double Divination Scarab setup. You can do Bloodlines. If you want but uh, this is going to be probably a slightly better version and the lantern is you know going to be important because it might give us you know some incredible insane power added onto and every once in a while we'll get some really good stuff like increased pack size we'll get more pack size we've got double more pack size which is nice one on a high one on low so i'm pretty happy with this and then i'm putting uh, breach on the remainder because breach uh, all flames do seem to be pretty good overall Let's see, we got some increased attack speed, accuracy, a couple of nasty mods here, 50% chance to evade, it's pretty hardcore, so you know, leave that there on the bottom. Uh, the upside don't really give us anything, we're just getting some nice bonus, more pack size, which is going to be meaningful on this map. So that is the setup, they'll go with there, and let's see how this goes. Probably should have done a warm up map on this, because my computer is probably not ready for this amount of juice. <laughs> Mm, yes. Okay, projectiles are already fired at a random direction. Now, I shouldn't be just killing a whole bunch of stuff here, but I want to grab uh, some buffs, headhunter buffs, before I go bust all the way over to the boss room, which we'll do now. 69 headhunter buffs. Nice, nice number. That's a pretty good number to take into the boss room. And the boss room, well... I've got Sanctuary memorized pretty well. It's going to be over here, I think. Uh, the layout can be a little different sometimes, but anyway. Here we go. Put a portal down there just in case. Uh, we really want to kill the boss first because that is going to make the remaining Eater of World altars spawn with player side options only. Very important uh, as those of you who are used to doing some curation strategy or, or any divination strategy in the past or present are used to that being a very important thing to do rushing the boss rushing the crimson temple boss usually sanctuary is definitely harder to rush but at any rate one of the cool things about shaper all flames is that they do not spawn immediately which means i can kind of go in and out in here and do another pass through clearing out the eldritch minions while uh no, oh my goodness this is gonna be well, this is going to be a hard map because I'm taking, I'm actually getting a lot of eater altars here. So I already got, you know, certain things like re uh, less physical reduction or physical uh, damage. What is it? Physical or defense is reduced. Uh, probably got the frenzy charge reduced one as well. I did have less recovery on there. Uh, okay, I don't really care about. Yeah, that stuff. I don't know if there's a delirium scare that's any good, but anyway. 
A lot of these are already unlocked, so th this is more altars than usual. And it's going to make the math pretty hard. And one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of this strat is because while this is freaking awesome, what I got going for me right here, it's going to be kind of hard to like full clear the map without ever dying. Now, this was a fairly easy map in that it doesn't have, you know, um, Shaper... Uh, Shaper Touched, it doesn't have reduced effective auras. Trying to crank up the pack size, there are some really gnarly mods on there. So it is a relatively easy map. It does have <laughs> monsters have additional projectiles and AoE, which is pretty rough. But pretty good overall. It does feel bad, though, to try to do these maps and then to, you know, die in the middle. And then, you know, I come back in with no Headhunter buffs. And holy, if I got to deal with that kind of stuff from start to zero, from or start to finish, that's... It's hard to ramp back up with that kind of eater player downside. So let's hope I don't die. I'm not going to loot this map. I'm just going to try to clear it. And then we will uh, finish the video. I'll just continue running until... Well, either until I die or until I clear the map. So, go ahead and uh, place your bets. Now, as to <laughs> whether you make it through this map. This build was designed for this kind of content. As you can see, it is doing a lot of damage. Even before I had any Headhunter buffs, it was doing plenty of damage. It's freezing enemies. Nice added defensive layer there. Nice to get three Alvas out of the way. Uh, Ritual does seem to be one of the easier things to do, usually. Uh, it's going to spawn a ton of Shaper All Flames back again. And I really do enjoy... Uh, the final ritual, well, this ritual is actually not that easy to do because it wrecks my recovery. My recovery is already kind of wrecked. And yeah, I definitely see myself dying at some point in this map because I'm just watching my life pool. Uh, and not the greatest things are happening to it here. But anyway. Even with 65 headhunter buffs can be precarious. I bet you if I die, it's going to be from a ritual. Issues of recovery. You can see that Berserk is up a lot. And Berserk is definitely uh, giving me a lot of extra defense and offense and speed as well. If I have Berserk on, I'm eh, probably not going to die. The helmet is really strong for that. You can see that I have 55 Soul Eater buffs. Usually you can only have 45. But because of the gloves, that is giving me the extra Soul Eater buffs. And that is helping me maintain the, the rage which is not giving me any attack damage, but it's giving me Berserk uptime like crazy. So that is why I'm using that combo, even though uh, the Rage itself does not help me out very much. You can see some Divination cards dropping, but honestly, uh, even with this amount of juice here, I don't see, you know, I don't see a huge amount of Divination cards dropping. Uh, it should be... Uh, you know, given that the cost of this map is somewhere around like 27, 28 divines now, I should be getting about twice as much loot as I would get on average from a high investment barrel curation strat. And uh, I've said this before, I've taken an, an affinity for the barrel uh, strategy over this. And it's not because this build is bad at this kind of juice stuff. It's actually, I would say, even better, uh, relatively speaking, at this kind of strategy than it is for barrel a sort of barrel and ghost trap uh, because it's you know a little bit more powerful than it is quick uh, in that sense uh, but it certainly gets the job done either way and well actually the worst thing it would be at is the meat sacks farm which is what I showcased for the last uh, video that I did a showcase video on with the uh, elemental of the spectrum and that was uh, trying to do this meat sacks farm a little sooner than I was ready for. This character here can absolutely clean house on the meat sack stuff. And is still not the best at that strat. But apparently a lot of other people have picked up on that strat. So I put it on the shelf for now. I'll let other people have their fun. And wow, almost died right there. Trying to run through that ritual. Third ritual. Fourth one's going to be real fun. If I make it. There we go. Gonna open strong boxes. I guess I got all the Alvas done. I got one more ritual left. Maybe a few strong boxes left. I have to really uh, sit around and wait a while for these Shaper All Flames to spawn. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. Definitely adds a lot of time. Something I, well, another thing that I'm not a huge fan of uh, for this strategy. I guess I got a, a Boyer Cluster there for 12 passives. I assume that's what that was. 
I actually think I'm getting a, a fair bit unlucky on the divination drop. I mean, considering I got over 300% quant going on here, I mean, that's should be a little bit better than this. No divination dupe, but, you know, could have happened. Loot filter is quite tight now, though. Don't even have the inventor or union card full stacks on here anymore. Showing all fortunate cards, all Mad King cards, and a few other things. This will be basically the last moment of this mapping experience. And let's hopefully I can make it. If we're going to see an explosion of loot, it's going to come after this ritual. If there is one. I hope there is. Here it comes. Show me the loot. Wow. Uh, stack of hoarders. <laughs> Stack of hoarders is what I got, guys. Uh, okay, well, uh, major letdown. Major letdown on the loot side of things. <laughs> but uh, performance-wise, Bill did okay. Took a 42% quant, so I mean, it's not nothing. Uh, but, you know, quantity on gear does matter here. For this farm. For sure. Oh, still got a strong box to do. Hmm. Could get lucky. Get a reopen, maybe? No, maybe not. Or maybe so, that is... Yeah, I actually did get a reopen, I think. Oh, Shaper all flames all expired there. And one quick little pass through, so that when I come back into this map, I don't get ganked off the side by something like this. Here's some whole bunch of Shaper all flames still active. Interesting. Okay. All right, not a big deal. Just have a whole bunch of ground effects in the ground to uh, tiptoe over to loot the map <laughs> after this. Uh, so yeah, under normal circumstances, I'd already be looting the map. And would have already looted half the map, probably. Because this is going to be painful to loot this map. <laughs> for sure. Uh, but I'd say, uh, John, pretty well done. That is... Uh, Definitely a, a worthy showcase of what this build can do. Uh, and you know what? Actually, it just kind of dawned on me that there really isn't that much loot to pick up. And I probably could have just done this on the go. I've made the loot filter so ridiculously res uh, restrictive now uh, that it, it makes the looting process <laughs> more enjoyable as a consequence. But, you know, I get less loot as well. So yeah, actually, I think I'll stick it out and just finish looting. I've already looted half the map. There's not a whole lot to pick up. Uh, I can maintain a few headhunter buffs this way. Oh, why are there why, why are there still monsters over there? Oh, okay. Well, I thought I'd make it all the way, but yeah. This farm is like that. There's always there's always some shape or all flame that's still active out there. But anyway, <laughs> let's uh let's get a move on here. We got uh the gear to start with. So. I think you already noticed, I have a mirror tier Fizbo. This is the TFT Fizbo. Most people were uh, getting the, the Russian bow from Sakaiba, but I really wanted the 15% increased explicit physical modifier enchant on it. And no, not with minus three sockets. I'm going for that sort of thing. But uh, a fair version with 200% increased attribute requirements. I'm using an elegant hubris with a supreme ostentation. So this is the highest damage usable Fizbo in the game right now. TFT was uh, fortunately uh, kind enough to uh, mirror this bow, uh, at least in transition to a different enchant. So I got a very limited time only bow here, and you cannot copy this bow anymore as far as I'm concerned. There are very few copies of it out there. Uh, for those of you who got one, congratulations. Uh, but, you know, most people aren't able to use this enchant anyway. At any rate, uh, this is the bow. It's a great bow. I'm glad I have it. It's, you know, pretty close to perfectly rolled. But anyway, uh, moving on. We have a quiver. Man, oh man, we got a quiver. <laughs> now, usually I wait until I get the mirror tier quiver. And I will say, for this build, a mirror tier quiver would be better than this. I'm pretty sure. However, if I was playing Fizz to Cold Conversion Tornado Shot, I would take this over the best quiver in the game. Uh, mirror wise so 
The long and short of this is, for fun, while I didn't have that much currency, I decided to craft a few of these quivers with some cheap essences and, you know, do the whole, like, cannot roll attack modifiers, exalts, and annul, and get, get some decent, you know, tier 3 and above. Or maybe tier 2 and above, and I was not using Frenzy at the time, so that's why I have that uh, suffix. And I figured I would just double corrupt a few. It costs about 10 divines to make each one, and I was just hoping for one or maybe two fizz uh gained as extra and that would really help put it in the running for the same value as a mere tier quiver and then i could just worry about it at the very end like it's the last thing i worry about which is basically how things turned out well i hit the dream double corrupt here uh literally the best two double corruptions and for i shot an extra arrow is very strong it's not as strong for as it would be for tornado shot uh, but, you know, the, the shotgunning on the return Nimbus projectiles and you're more likely to hit enemies on the way out with Nimbus that spreads out all of the projectiles, as you can read it here. So, this is just a really fun quiver. I, I, I'm obviously quite proud of it. It is easily the best uh, double corruption I've ever had in the history of playing. And the next best one would be a reservation power charge on crit Gullhelm that I hit, which was a perfect double corruption, but less meaningful item less difficult to hit <laughs> like seven leagues ago or something so very memorable experience i like wearing this quiver obviously i will replace it eventually but for now and i, I have no idea what this is worth <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think this quiver is actually going to be worth on standard be very curious to hear but anyway moving on uh let's get the chest out of the way this is an interesting one with supreme ostentation which i think you know i'm just going to show you right now here Supreme Ostentation is due to Elegant Hubris. Ignores attribute requirements. That is how I'm able to wear this uh, weapon with the enchant. And that is how I'm able to wear this chest. It comes with random synthesis implicit. In most cases, for most people, if they're trying to follow the build, they're going to put either Power Charge on Crit or uh, Endurance Charge taken when hit recently. Every one second. Uh, however, I was able to get both of those things through the Elegant Hubris. So I was able to go pure defensive... Uh, and or offensive with the chest and this is a corrupted i guess you know i paid like 90 div for this uh, i got very lucky this was out there but it was before anyone really cared about it a uh, reduced damage taken if corrupted is very strong because it's just flat damage reduction across all forms of damage and of course the fizz is extra uh, taken as lightning i mean uh, is definitely strong as well plus one socketed gems not as good as percent damage but one of the best corruptions you can get uh, well it is the best if you needed it for an enlightened five or whatever but anyway uh it has a divinity buff which grants me 50 percent more elemental damage for 10 seconds it has about 50 percent uptime in combat and it grants that divinity buff also grants 20 percent less damage physical or sorry elemental damage taken which does work in conjunction with these implicits and it also gives curse immunity while it's up. So a really crazy strong chest. If you think about, if you actually sit down and think about how strong it is to be able to get a up to 50% uptime on a 50% more damage multiplier on a chest w without links involved, like absent links, uh, that's pretty wild uh, to get that. And so most people don't even think about it because of the requirement. And this chest is usually reserved just for uh, animated guardians but i'm able to use it here and i didn't really see this coming but it just kind of dawned on me over time if i got really great synth implicit i could really justify using this chest i was probably going to use lightning coil or uh, I, I guess uh, greed's embrace uh, otherwise if you had asked me you know way early on in the league but yeah that's where we're going here the helmet has the reservation multiplier here which <laughs> people caught on this to this and Man, it made this helmet cost a lot. With a perfect uh, rage roll, with the cost reservation multiplier, it costs hundreds of divines. There are actually workarounds for that. You don't really necessarily have to have this. For example, I I'm not even running an Enlighten. So, I mean, I could run an Enlighten instead and, and maybe drop the Enhance down here and put the other aura down there if I wanted. So, you know, it's not even mandatory. But, you know, if you want the min-max version, that is the enchant to get, of course. Really, really liked that combination with these gloves because it was able to get a whole bunch of extra rage through the reliable Soul Leader, higher Soul Leader for that matter. The difference between 45 and 55 Soul Leader buffs is 50% increased attack speed, which is, well, that's a few affixes in value right then and there. And then this double corruption is peculiar. I went ahead and had Whispers of Doom on the amulet, but then swapped it out for additional curse and enfeeble. Allowed me even more tankiness in these really hard 
uh, T17 maps. The flat crit is good. I'm not crit capped with this build. Don't have brittle and don't have crit cap. Don't have clusters for it really at all. So very strong there. Um, I suppose if I had the best chest imaginable, I might have 5% reduced damage ta taken if corrupted. And then 1% attack crit, flat crit. <laughs> As uh, another roll in there. Moving on to the boots. Very cheap boots here. Double corrupted. Endurance charge. It gives me a source, an extra source of regen. I would like movement speed more, but I never got around to it. So anyway, there you go. A double corrupted headhunter because why not? It's very cheap. I was able to fix some elemental res and keep the life in there. Uh, as you can see, I got kind of low life here. So I'm getting life wherever I can. Nimbus ring, self-explanatory. I already talked about earlier and how that's working. A very well-rolled Ventor. Don't care that much about rarity. So this is basically, a, I haven't even been looking for one better than this. That was, uh, you know, like 200, 300 divines at the time. This yoke was like 140 divines, I think. And yeah, they kind of already know the price of everything else. We got Progenesis, which was very expensive this league. A perfect taste of hate, not too bad. And we got Divination Dislate because it's a magic fine build. Went ahead and got movement speed on the Quicksilver. A little surprised I did that. And then an Alchemist Jade Flask of the Impala because I am going for Evasion Cap. I made a whole separate video on how the defensive layers of this build work. I think the build was maybe, a, you know, it wasn't exactly the same as the path of building here for this build. But, you know, it was relatively close. So, anyway, going for Evasion Cap. So that is why that's there. Now let's go over the gems. We'll start with the Damage Link, which features... Valai shot 2120. Valai shot's pretty strong. Um, not as strong as Val Lightning Arrow is, I guess. And definitely been pleased with I shot damage and AoE coverage. Not as good as Lightning Arrow. Uh, really, uh, not technically as good as Lightning Arrow on the damage or the clear. Uh, but if you have Yoke of Suffering and you're doing enough damage to shock enemies pretty hard, I'd say it is uh, actually better than I shot for single target. Got Awaken Cold Pen is nice because I can use this in here instead of uh, some other options that I might have. So very strong uh, support gem if you're doing the full conversion there. Uh, Awaken Vicious Projectile support, very strong there. Increased crit damage, which, you know, I mean, you could sub this out. And the meat sacks, maybe not the smartest thing, but for most things, it's still very strong. Inspiration and Awaken Elemental Damage attack support, pretty obvious choices there. So basically all the highest damage links you can put. I don't really think Mirage Archer is all that important uh, for strategies like this when I need the damage, need to hit harder, need the higher elemental ailment threshold. I like having pure damage in that event, so that's the links I went with there. We have one of my favorite things to do now is a six link Mana Forge setup, not six link or setup. Live tap support Frenzy of Onslaught because uh, I'm not, not wearing an Onslaught flask. Uh, Mana Forge arrows, Awaken Cast on Crit with Sniper's Mark to make uh, the Mark way, 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 way more reliable. And would probably be using Warlord's Mark here if uh, I'm, well, not with Meat Sacks, but outside of Meat Sacks, I would be using Warlord's Mark if not for this helmet being crazy, good, and strong. So I was able to get Sniper's Mark and Berserk into the build. And then Tornado. So the reason I'm using Tornado is an interesting one. It does synergize incredibly well with the Nimbus Ring. You'll notice in the path of building that I have an integer of three on the damage, not two. So one for outbound uh, projectiles, two for returning projectiles, which ends up being actually a lot more than that if you're positioned well and getting shotgun. Uh, but as well as uh, an extra hit through AoE on Tornado. Now, the really cool thing here is with uh, Awaken Castle Grit Tornado... This is especially the case on Meat Sacks Farms. You would have noticed the T down here. You might have to rewind the video. This thing is going off like crazy. Just going off over and over and over and over again. So what's happening is I'm spawning a tornado on top of wherever I'm standing or the enemy that I'm standing on. And it's spawning over and over and over again, which means it never finishes phase one. Which phase one is actually when you do most of the damage through chain and stuff like that. It's not phase two where the tornado itself is doing damage. I mean, it's pretty negligible compared to phase one when you can actually chain projectiles off and... And get extra hits that way. Well, the AoE effect of Lightning Arrow and or Ice Shot also counts for that. So Tornado provides, basically means I'm never doing single target damage. I'm never doing single target damage because I have a Tornado out there that's soaking up hits. Allowing me to bounce off of either through Chain or uh, AoE. In this case, just AoE because I don't have Chain in the build. So it's proved to be very powerful. 
uh, especially when positioned with meat sacks, things like that. Something I love about the build, and one reason why I really liked uh, doing the meat sacks farm is because I was able to set up this otherwise squishy bow build tanky enough to do that and, and really capitalize on some of the single target damage abilities of uh, a Nimbus Ice Shot or Lightning Arrow build. It's really cool. All right, next let's get the auras out of the way. We've got Grace, Hatred, and Petri Blood. And then over on the life side, we have Arrogance with Vitality, Precision, and Dread Banner. No surprise there. Dread Banners to help me get uh, Evasion Cap. Flame Dash is also here because well, we definitely need to get out of the way out of some scary maps here in Tier 17. And then we got uh, the ever so underrated Cast from Damage Taken Immortal Call with Enhance, very strong. One of my favorite four links here, connecting Berserk and uh, Cast when Damage Taken Immortal Call, allows me to connect both Immortal Call and Berserk here. They give uh, some really nice bonuses to cooldown recovery rate, both of them. In this case, very nice, very strong there. Uh, just on a side point, I do want to say that at one point I was interested in running uh, with, what do you, what do you call it? Um, War Cries, yeah, War Cry. Uh, the Battle Mage War Cry. Which converts spell damage into attack damage up to 150% more. And it was only going to be two points to get that. And I was able to synergize that with the helmet's conversion on Rage as well. That did not pan out. That really uh, just, in a theoretical sense, genius. But in a practical sense, basically doesn't work. Because it would only go up very, uh, ever so often, even with an enhanced support. You know, terrific cooldown recovery. The call to arms in <laughs> Battle Mage Cry didn't go up very often. So... And when it went off, you know, it wasn't usually near stuff. I think it would have actually been pretty good with meat sacks. But in the end, I backed out of it. And I didn't go for it. Uh, and now to get that, I had to drop the entire lifelink. Which means I had to go uh, down here. And I, and for a hot second there, I was running Master Surgeon. Which means I had to get the natural remedies. and the flat inside. It was just a whole spider web of changes. And I ultimately didn't like it. Backed out of it. But I wanted you to know that uh, that was a really cool theory crafting point. Uh, that I was going aiming for at the very, 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 very end when I got a, th a one pass of voices, I would do that. And I really thought it would work and it would go well, but it just didn't pan out. So I had to drop that idea. Anyway, that concludes the gems. Uh, we're already kind of talking about the jewels. Uh, so let's start with a one pass of voices. Really not necessary. Honestly, not getting a huge amount of power spike from this. <laughs> I mean, considering this thing costs three mirrors, not three mirrors worth of power was gained uh, by switching over to this for my build. But, you know, it is nice because then I can actually get a fit of Forbidden Flame and Flesh Jewel in. I really wanted to keep this Searching Eye Jewel here. I mean, I need the accuracy. The life is good. I need the Flat Fire uh, for the Yoke of Suffering because I have no Flat Fire otherwise. Uh, I need the Phasing. Otherwise, i got to spend two points to get it over here. Didn't want to do that. And, uh, well, ironically, I actually need the cold res. <laughs> the Sith implicit, even. But, yeah, very, very useful um, searching eye here uh, that I really wanted to keep in play. So it helped save a lot. So I waited until I got a one pass of voices. Before I had the one pass of voices, I had the searching eye and a basic jewel that had bleed on it and a few other things like percent life. Dropped the uh, focal point. And I had two separate eight passives uh, clusters like this. And the other one, let's see if I can actually find it. I don't know if, uh... yeah, it was this one actually. So it was Blanketed Snow, Doriani's Lesson, and Storm Rider. And this helped me get the power charge on crit thing. So for anyone who might be trying to follow the build, this is where you get, this is obviously the best place to get the power charge on crit. If you don't have the one passive voices, you don't have Forbidden Flame Flesh, flesh Jewels. Uh, that is where you do it. So, the best option for me, I feel like, was Focal Point. Uh, mainly for the defenses. You know, People forget Focal Point is crazy strong, uh, defensively speaking. If you read into it. And this is especially true on the Meat Sacks farm. It's being chased down by Meat Sacks. If you want to have a chance to just stand still and attack uh, with like five or six Meat Sacks wailing on you. This is a heck of a lot of added defense, uh, Focal Point is. So I didn't have it because I was running Windward, and I definitely think Windward is super nice and probably better. Uh, just in general, I really like Windward for the damage over time reduction aspect of it, and running, especially running Soul Leader, uh, I would do that. By the way, uh, side point, I'm not running these gloves on Back to Basics, Quick Barrel Farms. I'm using uh, 
shadows and dust just because uh, there's not enough rares on the map to justify it. So moving on, we are already kind of looking at the passives. We'll start with the uh, ascendancy points. Got far shot because that works with Nimbus and the return projectiles works there. And we got endless munitions, obviously pretty obvious there. And we got gathering winds. We got windward, and then we got focal point through the we've been playing flesh jewel. Forgot to mention Vengeance Cascade. Vengeance Cascade is increasing projectile speed by 150%. That combined with the Bow Mastery, as far as I know, uh, works, does synergize by granting me essentially 150% increased damage on all returning projectiles, all of which can shotgun if you're standing inside the hitbox of the enemy. And believe me, I've seen it. I mean, I, I notice the damage, especially the shotgunning aspect. You see it and you feel it whenever uh, you're standing on top of one meat sack enemy and it just starts just getting blown up because of uh, good positioning. So that is um, why Far Shot is chosen there, because you get all the benefit of the extra damage. You also get extra damage uh, double dipping with Far Shot through Long Shot here. And looking at some of the other things, we got you know some increased projectile speed here, taking all of the life stuff that I can. Can't take that one here. The only thing I'm missing is uh, 50 life, max life. And you know if I didn't, if I wasn't running Harrier, I would get the max life. Thinking about doing that, I only got 3,300 life. Uh, yeah. So, oh, I actually forgot uh, the other jewels here. So, large threat of hope, and then massive wheel threat of hope, and then an elegant hubris. Okay, so kind of forgot the jewels. But anyway, they feed into the passive choices. So, it's a large threat of hope. We get multi shot for free, we get piercing shots. Again, you need either chain, fork, or pierce uh, to make it work with Nimus. Master Flexor easily. You get Primeval Force, but I kind of want the Master here. Uh, get Quick Step, one with Nature, get an Aspect of the Eagle. So get a whole lot of value there, and that, that actually pales in comparison to what you get with the Massive Wheel. Forces of Nature, Aspect of the Lynx, Finesse. Could get Path of the Hunter if you want, Hired Killer, Harrier. Could get Leadership, got Reservation Efficiency. Blood Siphon, three additional notables to the Elegant Hubris, one of which is granting me Elemental Ailment Avoidance through Storm Shroud. And yeah, the other jewel would be the Watcher's Eye here, which is all, which is just about the Convert and the Evade, really, and the extra damage is nice with Precision. And then we got Endurance Charge when taking a hit recently. With the Instant Leech, we have Crit Multi with Increased Reservation. We got Chaos Res, so obviously this seed is S tier for this. Uh, but the really cool thing, the, one of the last things about the build, is in the event that I needed the power charge on crit, I could spend, I could waste three points uh, to get that here, not getting any value out of Price of Glory. But the Dagger Mastery, surprisingly, works for bows uh, if, for Calling Strike, because it's not, it's not stipulating dagger crits, it's just saying any and all crits. All crits have Culling Strike, so pretty good use of four points if I'm getting Power Charge on Crit and Culling Strike on, you know, almost all hits anyway. If I didn't need the Power Charge on Crit, I would not spend four points this way, however. So the remaining passives are granted for, you know, just kind of life, reservation efficiency, uh, getting some not not 100% suppress, but getting some lucky suppress on here, getting some phasing two ways. Okay, getting crit where I can. Uh, not crit cap, just kind of, you know, cutting corners here and there, wherever I can. Stun immune, getting enough cold res and stun uh, avoidance to get basically immune or capped in both cases without flasks up. Something I like to do. Uh, you could say I should maybe go for suppress. Uh, I, don't, I still don't think I would get suppress capped, actually, if I took them all. I need one uh, chance to blind. With hit on attacks. Need one of those for sure. And yeah, that'll do it for the passive. So the last thing to do, look at the uh, path of building. So here it is. Uh, I got the calculations up here. You can see the spread. Virtually all cold damage. Zero, zero lightning. Wow. A little bit of flat fire. And the flat fire is there for uh, the ignite for the yoke now even though i'm doing no lightning i'm still shocking with all of my cold damage so that's fine because i'm doing pure cold i'm getting a ton of chill effect and indeed freezing most things which again freezes another ailment that yoke will pick up on and deal extra damage for so that's pretty nice you can see the quick chance 74 percent i would like it to be higher with headhunter buffs it is higher i suppose 
Uh, now finally have 100% hit chance, which is good. Uh, you can see the quant and rarity down here. Rarity is, again, not very important. This league, uh, you can see the max physical damage taken. That number is a little bit high because we have a mortal call. If we take off a mortal call, that number definitely goes down. But it's still actually pretty respectable for, you know, a glass cannon bow build, I would say. So those are all the calculations. You can look at more if you want. I do have leech, instant leech, so a lot of recovery going on. Uh, no life on hit, but I can take some life on hit here if I have a no leech map, if I need to. Configed currently for a bossing setup with the gloves in mind. This is probably one of the strongest on paper boss configed setups uh, for damage I've done. I actually do more than 25% shock in most cases. 75% increased projectile damage because uh, it can't pick up on Vengeance Cascade, so that's half the value of Vengeance Cascade. 97 million DPS with 109% effective hit pool. Uh, you know, that's if I have basically all the all the goodies rolling. But yeah, even on low life, the pretty crazy high good numbers there for a magic find build. Of course, that's with Divinity. That obviously helps. You can see how much of <laughs> 50% uh, more. So that would not actually be 97% all the time. But again, with everything active that can be active on a boss, uh, that's what it looks like. So pretty bad. Yep, chill grants damage. Look how much damage just one ailment is. That's from sh uh, that is from uh, Yoke of Suffering. The recently buffed Yoke of Suffering. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it there and let you guys comment in the comments below what you think about this cool groovy Ice Shot build. Now Ice Shot is obviously a hipster version of Lightning Arrow, and uh, that is maybe the third and final reason why I chose Ice <laughs> Shot over Lightning Arrow because I've never done it before and it is pretty cool. No pun intended. Uh, but yeah, Lightning Arrow is what I would go to probably in most cases. I don't know what I'm going to do next league. We'll see what happens. I suspect the meta will change and the strategies will change. Um, I, I lament a little bit about not going a stronger build for the Meat Sacks farm. Is this strat Even with this build, which now like six or seven or maybe eight divines, or rather <laughs> mirrors, invested uh, with the one pass of voices, still struggles a bit on the Meat Sacks farm and still not super fast with the barrel and go farm but definitely can handle pretty well handle the content that you saw in this map uh, as you could see not not an easy map uh, well relatively easily rolled but just not an easy map in general <laughs> definitely pretty tough to do so i'm gonna leave it there thank you for watching thank you for checking out this build i hope you liked it we'll see more like it in the coming leagues uh, but that's it that is the high high investment ultra end game build that i got going for me this league and it's been fun i'd have no regrets with it except for the battle mage stuff that didn't work out anyway i will catch you guys later in the next video we got a thousand maps i'm doing so i am using this build for a thousand curation barrel and go maps uh despite it not being extraordinarily tailored well for that farm definitely gets the job done so i'll see you there on twitch or uh, in some of these highlight videos that will be definitely coming to you soon